All right, man, yo, this is DJ Psych, man. We're here on Get Hit, Ill Donuts Radio. I got Chris O'Bannon in the studio right now. What's the deal, man? What's the deal? What's good, bro? Man, shit, life. Hey, man. Say. So for everybody that doesn't know who Chris O'Bannon is, tell me who Chris O'Bannon is. Chris O'Bannon is a black guitarist from Compton, California, mm. multifaceted artist, producer, sonic designer. All those amazing things that have to do with music, man. So you're a true artist. True artist, man. Real art. Really about the art and the music, man. So you do, you do, you play multiple instruments. Yeah, I play the piano. I play the guitar. I play the bass guitar. I play the drums. Okay. I used to play the trombone. I don't say I play that no more. I don't want to just false claim it. You know what I mean? But okay. So, so your reason for doing music is because you know how to fucking do music. Yeah, man. It's my family. All of my cousins play instruments. My uncle was a pastor. I was in the choir, age seven. So, you know. In the choir singing, huh? Singing, bro. Had a solo. You had a solo. Okay. You feel me? I was lit. I had the whole solo. Hey, Loki, man, I had a solo, too, in the children's you choir. You feel me, bro? That's When you I get did. that I can't, solo. I probably you... can't sing like you now. But... Hey, but you you felt like a star in the moment, you though. Do, though. You they the all show. clapping and. Yeah, man. On, they on beat. Oh, man. <laughs> hey, so, so where you from, though? I'm from Compton, California, man. Rosecrans Central. Rosecrans Central, man. I'm from L.A. All yes, right. sir. So what, what, what was it like? What was it like, you know? Growing up over there, man, man, the ironic thing about L.A. is you don't never get banged on in your own hood. So I was in my hood all the time. I never got banged on until I left my hood. So I never really dealt with any type of, like, negative energy until I got older and my homies start turning into gangbangers. But I I love my city, bro. Like, I don't don't be over there no more, but I'm forever, you know, show love and respect to my city. I feel that. I feel that, man. Um, So so when did you know that you had a talent for like singing all that when did you know like when was i know i know you said like you, your whole your whole family did it but like when did i when know did, when for did sure know? i knew for sure that you wanted to do it probably seventh grade i was in a rock band and i got to be the singer and i got to play guitar and then when no one would show up play drums i played drums and that's when i knew like we did one show and we was just playing Guns N' Roses song. And I was like, man, this is what I want to do. I want to perform for people. I don't I don't care if I know the lyrics. I didn't even used to know my lyrics. I used to just sing, thinking back. But mm. I, I just love the energy of being able to be that artist that influenced people to have a good time and enjoy music. Okay. So you, so you say you used to be in a rock band. Yeah, I used to be in a rock band in middle school, 7th and 8th grade. I was in a rock band, man, the singer. Okay. <laughs> You was a singer in a rock band. I was a singer in a rock band. In Compton. Singing mentality. Yeah, no, nah, was, I was actually in San Pedro, man. Shout out okay. San Pedro. We, I used to catch the bus from Carson to San Pedro. Okay, okay. But, you know, it's more a little more diverse out there. Um, but at the same time, you know, we, I still had all my friends from Compton there. So, I mean, I was a singer from Compton in a rock band singing Metallica and Guns N' Roses and... Jimi Hendrix. So, I, hey, so I was about to ask you about your influences. So, is that how you learn how to play the guitar and all that? It's yeah, like, I mean, I have to say, as far as guitar goes, my influence is more like J- Jimi Hendrix, Prince. Those are my mm. main two like guitar influences. But overall, music, I had to say like John Legend, Ty Dolla Sign, um, okay. Drake. You know what I mean? Okay. Those okay. are my influences. Erykah Badu. The singers, singers. The singers, man. The singers, man. Okay. Okay. So you found that voice, and you was like. I'm running Maybe with I'm it. I'm singing. Yeah, I'm running with it. I mean, I started rapping, and then I started singing, and people be like, oh, don't rap, sing, sing, rap. And they would just not want to decide, so I just just stuck to what I wanted to do, and I ended up just singing a little bit more than rapping. Okay. So you from the Bay? No, I'm from Compton, but- Oh, no, you, no, you, no, my bad, my bad. I'm, no, I'm it's sorry. not. that's actually not wrong, because I consider myself from the Bay, too. Like, I'm okay. from Compton, but I grew up as a man in the Bay. Like, I went there when I was 17. I left when okay. I was 24. So that was kind of the so time that's, frame. So that's that's when you 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 know you're coherent. You right. understand what's going you know what I'm on. Saying? You know, fucked you know what up what a little saying? bit, you messed up. up. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So so the Bay had a big influence. A big on Big influence, bro. Shout out to the Bay because I wouldn't even be where I'm at in terms of just the music industry if it wasn't for the Bay. Because I went out there, I started my production company and I started producing for artists like Neff the Pharaoh, and that led me to like E40 and like just meeting a bunch of people, bro. And like when I got that clout quote unquote it allowed me to like move back towards LA and like build from there. So okay. I gotta give a lot of 
a lot of everything to the bay for real. What's your pro- you say you got a production company? Yeah, it's called Slight Work. Slight Work. Yeah, Slight Work. So you was doing producing and stuff. Yeah. Before the, okay. I started producing because my cousins all produce and they put they put that on my computer when I was like twelve. That's I've been producing since I was twelve. Since you were twelve years old. Yeah, I'm twenty five now. So okay. All right, man. So shit, you got you got you got you got blood in the game right now, man. Yeah, I got some years, man. I ain't no rookie no more, man. So you ready for it? I'm ready for it. They better be ready for me, man. They That's gotta be ready for you. All right. They're not ready for me. That's why I, I haven't reached the full potential yet. But it's no holding back now. No, it's coming, man. It's, it's coming. It's, it's for definitely sure. coming. You know, you know why I know it's coming is because, you know, as a DJ, we get DJ packs and shit all the time. Right. You know what I'm saying? And. Um, I heard I heard about you before. I heard about Chris O'Ban. Actually, I don't know if you know my guy Sintwali. Yeah, that's my boy. You know Sintwali? Yeah, that's my boy. That's hey. my boy. Hell yeah, yeah. So, Sintwali so, from New York. Sintwali was the first. Shout out Sintwali, man. He was the first person to tell me. He was like, yeah, Chris O'Ban, this, that, and the third. That. So Sintwali, backstory. He actually. Uh, he actually used to manage me. Okay, that's fire. Yeah, like when I first came out to L.A. Hell yeah. And stuff. So he actually used to manage me. We went up to the Bay. We went up to all oh, that. That's fire. So he was the first person to actually like, introduce me to Chris O'Bannon. So then, um, you know, when I get these DJ packs, I get a whole lot of them. Right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I seen your name. I was yeah. like, I was like, so let me let me listen to it because right. cause my boy Sintwali hit me. He had already told he you. Already, that's fire, man. Yeah, Shout out Sintwali, man. Yeah, he already told me about it and shit. So, so uh, you know. I want you to introduce what I got, you know what I'm saying, right. which was a, a track called Henny and Tequila. Oh, yeah. I be off the Henny and Tequila. That's not a lie, bro. I really be off the Henny. I don't advise anybody else to do it. Yeah, But at this time, at this point, it's like I got to accept that people are going to listen to the song and try it. So I'm mean, like, just do it responsibly. Right. But, yo, Henny and Tequila is the anthem. Like, are you team Henny or are you team Tequila? You, you can't be mad. I be off the Henny and Tequila. It's like a song for everybody. All right, man. Hey, so we about to go into that Henny and Tequila. Hell Let's yeah. Shout hit. out Desi, man. Shout out to Desi. We about to go into that. Get hit. Ill Donuts Radio. Let's get it. All right, man. That was that Henny and Tequila from man. Chris O'Bannon. Yes, sir. Hope tell y'all me, messing with that, man. Tell me about that track, man. Man, Henny and Tequila, that was produced by me and Desi. And then I had a inquire with my boy Blast, like one of the hardest producer artists in LA right mm-hmm. now. Coming up, he got that project with Bino, six tape that's out. That's yeah, yeah, shout out to Bino. Shout out Bino, shout out Blast. I had him add like two sounds on that, make it official, you know what I'm saying? But it was all in house. Shout out Rose Crantz, Rose Grows Record. They put that out there. They they the ones that put it in the DJ pool for me. So it's really just like a whole collective group of people that's pushing that song and really believe in that song. So we're gonna write it out. Hey man, like I was telling your manager with that song, man. Only thing it has to do is just get into the hands of the DJ, right, bro. Man. And that shit's taking off. It just got to be heard, and I realize it's really a two year span for a song to really reach its potential. So you, know, you just got to keep pushing, 100%. man. Keep pushing, cause you gonna, gonna get your local. You are gonna get your local. Hopefully, you will get your local people. Right. Hopefully, with. yeah. Hopefully, and then from there, you know, you know, with the with the IG and you know the social media nowadays, right. She could blow up, bro. Right. Yeah, so, definitely. You never know, man. Like, when I did this song, it's called Right With It. Shout out my boy, Kalen, for real, for real, G Perico. That's, like, one of the biggest songs in my career. It got 10 million streams. We didn't know that was going to happen when we did it. We just kind of did it. You never know. So I take every song like that. You never know. You never fucking know, bro. So, do, know. do you have any videos or anything? Yeah, I got a new video coming out. It's called No Cameo. It's about my boy. Rest in peace, my boy, Steffi, man. He passed away at the age of 21 in my own hood. So it's, that's the reason why I don't go back to my hood a lot. But I wrote this song. It's called No Cameo because it's like I'm finally reaching all these heights, but I don't get to have my boy in my videos to have cameo no man, more. I so it. I, I wrote a song for bro, and I went to Compton and rocked on my Compton Cowboys. And um, my uh, my boy Saddle Up Dusty. Shout out Dusty, man. Free Dusty, man. We wouldn't have none of this going on with him without him. So that video about to blaze the streets soon, bro. I feel it. I feel it. So, hey, uh... <laughs> We was joking around and stuff, and, and they say you had some horses and shit. Yeah, That's we had some horses, man. I was scared. I ain't gonna lie. I was scared, bro. Horses but, is big as fuck, bro. Bro. They big, And he bro. kept looking back at me. He kept trying to turn around and look at me I like, who is this? Either, who bro. is on my back fuck. right now? You know, it was funny <laughs> as hell, boy, but hey, it was an experience, man. Can't say I never been on a horse. Can't say that no more. Right. Can't say that no more. Hey, so uh, outside of music. Right. Outside of music, what do you do? Outside of music, or is it is it music? Ah, man, I don't honestly. I want I want people to get to know Chris, Chris O'Bannon. O'Bannon. I hear you, bro. Uh, I I would say outside of music, what I do is I watch movies, bro. 
I'm a movie like I like watching movies. I like analyzing movies. I went to school for broadcast, so okay. it's like I was always on set in school. So I like really like to dissect like the shots, the director, all that. Like I'm so you, super into like. Does that, TV. does that does that come from being from LA? I would say yeah. I mean, cause you know we don't in LA we not taking no bullshit. It got to be fire quality content, TV, yeah, yeah. It's, movie. It's, it's it does not matter. Out here. So I would say, yeah, just being from L.A. and just being so close to Hollywood, I would say, like, yeah, I, I am very interested in, like, maybe crossing over into that when I'm done with music. Yeah, you know I was just about mean? to ask acting. you that. So, so you want to you wanna start acting, Yeah, huh? man. Try acting, man. Try TV, man. Try all that. Scoring film. I like scoring film, too. Like, I like doing all that type of yeah, stuff. Yeah, I was about man. to say, you're a producer. You, yeah. You, you also produce. Scoring Scoring's big out here, man. That's what I, I went score, to school I, for. You know, I scored, I scored a couple things. Oh, that's fire. Here. Hell you yeah, know. man! It's not easy, man. It's not, but you know, hell no. Nah. They don't. They take that for granted. But when you watch a movie, if the sound weak, you ain't gonna even like the movie no it's more. It's not gonna have the same effect, right? Exactly, bro. It's not so, gonna have the same effect, bro. Yeah, I like that. Outside of music, I say I really am interest, interested in cinema. In cinema, yeah, man. Okay, make it sound good. Do you ever? Do you ever? Uh, you ever think about like writing anything for cinema? Because like, because one thing about creatives is like we, you know, we like to write. We like to you know get our, get our, our ideas on paper. Yeah. So like. Um, you got movies, ideas, or anything like that? Yeah, man. I'll be having a lot of crazy ideas. I never write down that. You know what? You inspired me, bro. I'm going to have to start writing some of this down and like really think about considering starting to like write for movies or TV right. or something, man. Because I feel like even the black narrative is just not told right It's anymore. not, It's bro. not enough of us in those boardrooms telling it's people not. what to do. So. It's not. Or That's telling people what's culturally right, even just that. That's what that's what we trying to do with Ill Donuts Radio, man. This is all fire. black owned. Fire. I'm trying. We trying to. We trying to do our own narrative and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I stand those type of things, man. I love all black owned things. I'm supporting, bro. People have a problem. They don't know how to support black businesses, man. They like, don't. They don't. They are so super critical of the black business, but they'll go somewhere else. They'll go somewhere else. Get quick. some bad service and not be mad, but and not be pissed off because it's the white man. Right. It don't make no sense to me. It makes bro. zero sense, man. I don't support I don't that. Get it. I, don't get I support it, Ill Donuts though. I appreciate that, bro. We trying to we trying to make some some big moves here, man. So, do you have any uh, you have any projects dropping? Yeah, so I dropped a project of last year, April, it's called Sauce Meets World Two. Okay, um, and this year, where can they find that? Where can they find that? You can find that, find that on Apple Music, Spotify, so everything. any everything. Okay. Now I'm about to drop Sauce Meets World Two Point Five. It's gonna be ten more songs because I feel like the album was fire. It didn't get as much to do as it should, so I'm gonna just extend the album longer, it. put some more music on there, put a lot heard, of dope. It wasn't artists. heard enough. You want? Wasn't heard right? enough, bro. There's still some gems on there that I feel like need to be valued. So I'm gonna keep pushing, bro. Sauce Meets World 2.5 coming soon, man. Keep your eyes out for that. Okay. What's your what's your what's your writing process like? Man, I don't even write. You don't I write because because the reason why I asked you that was because you said uh, with the with the movie idea and stuff. Yeah. I just start writing down. So I was like, I don't write, bro. You don't, huh? I just record, bro, or I just like freestyle until I just have it all in my mind and until I just go go record it, man. I've been doing that since. Carter three. Once I heard the Carter three, I was like, "Damn." What, what do you think that is about? Like, I, I, I've been hearing a lot of artists saying, "Like, I don't write." Yeah, you know what I'm saying. What I do you mean, think that is about. You think it's like, um, <clears throat> I come in, I hear this beat, and whatever comes out comes out. I think and that's it, what it needs to be. Yeah, I think it has to do with just like creating parameters in your mind. Like when you write, mm -hmm. you got to actually write something down. You kind of creating that word into letters when it's really just communication like you know right, what i'm saying like right. when i'm thinking of something to say i might say a word in a way that if i was writing it i'd be like it's nah, not gonna come out I'm right not, yeah i'm and not you gonna, gonna read it that. wrong yeah you're gonna read it wrong yeah. honestly you just say what comes to your head because it's an instrument it's no longer just like words that's okay. how you really hone that in people don't want to write and then when someone's reading their lyrics you kind of can tell like he sounds like he reading his lyrics like sound corny so when you really start recording yourself and realizing, like, oh, I sound more comfortable, like, when I don't write. Right. It all has to do with the comfortability. Comfortability of it. So your uh your team sent me out another song, though. Yeah, this is a new anthem, bro. I really fuck with this new song. Man, good looking, bro. I really do. Good you know, looking. We had, we had a hint in tequila, and he sent me another track. Right. I want you to introduce that. I want you to title everything. All right, so this next song is called My Little Baddie. It's a new record I've been working on. I think it's like a real anthem, L.A. anthem, Bay Area anthem. And it's just me being inspired by the sounds of what's what's happening right now, but adding my own spin to it and, like, 
allowing myself to be free in the melodies and the beat. And so my little baddie is coming out. It's really about to take over the streets, man. I can see it happening, bro. Okay. All right, man. This Ill Donuts. We about to go into that My Little Baddie by Chris O'Banny. Yeah. Let's get it. All right, man. Ill Donuts Radio. That was My Little Baddie by Chris O'Banny. Yes, sir. Come on, man. We just getting started, man. Tell me about that track, bro. Man, My Little Baddie, man. It's literally about that girl who you know she always riding for you. And you thought she was a square. You thought she was really on some square. You like, I like her. She nah. a square. You get her in that bedroom, though. She a freak freak. That's freak what, that's freak. really for them undercover freaks out there. They need they song. There's a lot of them out here now. There's a lot of them in this world, in bro. In this world. You would, not, you would be surprised, bro. Every time I'm surprised, but <laughs> the square girls be the more freaky ones. I ain't going to lie. They just, yeah. They don't get to let it out. Then they, they get, get themselves a real nigga, and they be like, all right. Once they do, Let me show you what I really want. Yeah, I be trying. Hey, them bitches be horny all the time. Like, goddamn, chill. But <laughs> it's good though. You just gotta feed the beast. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, feed the fucking beast, man. You feel Shit. me, man? It don't hurt us, man. Nah, Shout out to all the square girls out there, man. I fuck with my little square bitches, man. Uh, I see your IG live going up. Come on, Shit. man. They going crazy for that. They know they done heard that on live nah, a few times, yeah, man. They did. Hey, so so if they want to check you on on IG live, how can they find you, man? You can find me on all any platform under one. Chris O'Bannon, O B A N N O N. Chris O'Bannon, one Chris O'Bannon, one Chris. The number one, yeah. All right, man. Hey, so we're looking forward to the project for sure. We got the two singles. When does uh when does the last single drop? My little baddie. My little baddie is gonna come by the end of March for sure. It's coming by the end of March, man. So just keep your ears open. Follow up, one Chris O'Bannon. You gonna hear the new music. Okay, you gotta, you gotta, you gonna make videos for him for that one as well. Yeah, now nah, we gonna definitely do the video, bro. We gonna definitely have the video coming soon, man. That's one of them ones that's my favorite. So I got now to. I do, I do got another question for you with the videos. What do you think about the videos nowadays? Because you know, back in the day, we used to have like one hundred and sixty Park where they used right. to play it on TV, right? But like making music videos now, is it is it one hundred percent necessary for the success of the song? I mean. In all cases, no, but a majority of them, yeah. Like, you got to have a visual because the visual not only going to help the song, it's going to help promote you and who you are in your face. Right. Because with, with, like, the song Right With It, it had already had 5 million streams before we ever made a video, so a lot of people didn't even know I was on the song. You said the song Right With It? Who who you do? That was It's uh, me, Kalen, for real, for real, and G. Perico. Okay. A lot of people didn't even know I was on the song until the video came out. Right. Like, they just don't, still to this day, a lot of people don't know. So I think you have to have a video, but to that same extent, I produced for this artist, his name is Shooter Gang Coney. We got a song that I produced for him. It's already at 2 point something million streams. No video. It's no only video. been out for a year. So I mean, it all depends on the person and the timing, man. It's timing. Everything has to Everything do with timing. It's timing, bro. You know, I've been out in LA and I, I hear that all the time. It's timing. Timing bro. is your shit. time is your time, bro. Your time is your is your time, man. For real, that's a hundred percent. That's one thousand percent. All right, man. Hey, so I appreciate you coming out. Appreciate you, Ill man. Donuts Radio. I want you to uh, shout out Ill Donuts Radio one more time for man, me. Man, shout out Ill Donuts, man. It's Chris O'Bannon. I'm rocking with DJ Psych. Shout out Ill Donuts. Hey, we got a house party. Oh, yeah. We lit. Tomorrow. We lit tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Oh, yeah. We lit Friday. We lit. I'm about to pull up with some baddies, bro. Hey, hey, my uh, online sold out already. Ooh. It's sold out already. Say no more. I'm ready, man. It's actually a penthouse. Ooh. It's a... It's a, it's a so it's a, it's a penthouse it's a penthouse house party downtown LA. It's a vibe. It's gonna be a vibe, man. That's what we, I y'all gonna y'all gonna see some video from that too. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. We going up. We going to nope it. I hope you there. If you're not there, you square. Yeah, if you're not there, you fucking square, <laughs> man. I'm off you. <laughs> For real. Hey, but this Ill Donuts Radio, we had Chris O'Bannon in the studio. Here goes his single one more time. My little baddie coming to y'all. We gonna keep this shit lit all year. Twenty twenty is mine. Let's Shout out it. Ill Donuts. Ill Donuts Radio. Let's get it. <laughs> 